Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. John 15, 18-20 If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. A UN refugee camp in Jordan. Christian Syrian refugees tell us they have been blocked by Muslim UN officials from living in these camps or getting any help whatsoever. One of them, Hassan, a Syrian convert to Christianity, told us in a phone call, Muslim UN camp officials knew that we were Muslims who became Christians, and they dealt with us with persecution and mockery. They didn't let us into the office. They ignored our request. Jude 1, 17 and 18 But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time, who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. Hassan and his family are now in hiding, afraid that they will be arrested by Jordanian police or even killed. Jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Christians would be persecuted as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and Luke 21, 12. Matthew 24, 9, Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Luke 21, 12, But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. There is clear evidence of discrimination by the United Nations Refugee Agency in Jordan against Christians. And it's part of the reason that while tens of thousands of Syrian Muslim war refugees have been settled in the United States and Britain, less than 1% have been Christian. And the two governments that could stop this persecution of Christian refugees, the U.S. and Britain, have done little to nothing about it. Christian refugees in the Middle East have been persecuted, ignored, and finally forgotten by Western governments. But a former Archbishop of Canterbury is saying enough. Lord George Carey has announced he's suing Britain's Home Office, alleging that politically correct officials have been institutionally biased against Christian refugees. He also wants to find out why out of the 60,000 Syrian war refugees accepted into the United States and Britain in 2014, almost none were Christian. Lord Kerry's attorney, Paul Diamond, explains the case. And so you have this absurd situation that a scheme is set up to help Syrian refugees and the people most in need, Christians who have been genocided, they can't even get into the, the UN camps to get the food. The Muslim UN guards will block you getting in. They'll laugh at you and mock you and you threaten you. Another Syrian refugee, Timothy, who told us he became a Christian after seeing Jesus in a dream, said he was also blocked from entering a refugee camp by Muslim UN officials. Acts 2.17 And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. All of the United Nations, almost of them, 99% they are Muslim. They were treating us as uh, enemies. Sunni Muslim officials have blocked the way, laughed at these people, threatened them, said you shouldn't have converted, you're an idiot for converting, you get what you get, words to that effect. Lord Kerry says by doing nothing, Western governments are complicit in what he calls the steady crucifixion of Middle East Christians. No simple measures are taken by both the British and the American government. It'd be simple just to open up a refugee camp 
for religious minorities, for Christians, Yazidis, whatever they are, and they'd be safe, but no one does that. Christian refugees who have managed to make it to Western countries are increasingly being deported back to Muslim nations where they face grave danger. Swedish attorney Gabriel Donner, who represents Christian asylum seekers, says Sweden is now deporting up to one third of Christian refugees back to Muslim nations, where they're likely to be imprisoned or killed. John 16, one through three. These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. Service is the Greek word latria, which means ministration of God, i.e. worship. Muslims kill in the name of Allah, thinking they offer God worship. The Bible tells us they do it because they do not know the Father nor His Son, Jesus Christ. One of those Christian refugees now facing imminent deportation is Iman Amir Arang from Iran, shown here with members of his church in a foot washing. He says Swedish officials either did not understand or care about the evidence of his Christian faith. So many atheists living in Sweden or are from Sweden, so they can't believe in somebody that believes in God. Just because they don't believe in our Lord, they don't trust anybody else to believe in the Lord either. They don't understand the message in the Bible. It's just completely alien to them. 1 Corinthians 1.18 for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. President Trump told CBN News in 2017 that Christian refugees would be given a priority, but Muslim governments officially classify Christians as security threats, causing their asylum applications to Western nations to be rejected. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Hebrews 13.3, 1 Corinthians 12.26. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. The UN's refugee agency did not respond to our request for answers. Lord Carey has publicly appealed for financial help in his suit against the British Home Office, which has already threatened the 84-year-old churchman with all court costs if he loses. Meanwhile, the Home Office is spending a lot of time and money on the resettlement of ISIS children. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecute the prophets who were before you. The Christian persecution the church is suffering right now, awful as it is, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, the greatest political leader in the history of mankind will take the world stage. He will launch a military campaign that will result in his acquiring authority over all peoples of the earth as we read in Revelation 13, 7 and 8. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. His empire will be the most extensive in all of history, encompassing the entire world, and his rule will be the most demonic the world has ever experienced. He will appear to be the savior of the world, but as he consolidates his power, his true nature will be revealed. He will emerge as a Satan-possessed and empowered person who hates God and is determined to annihilate both Christianity and Judaism. His method of eliminating Christians will be by beheading as we read in Revelation 24. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshiped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. For this reason, he is identified in Scripture as the Antichrist, as we read in 1 John 2.18. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. One day Jesus is coming! You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep, God 
grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Place and I don't want you to go there. We've been reporting on the bizarre phenomenon that seems to be taking place not just in this country, but all over the world. Getting angry at God isn't going to solve anything. Don't oh, but dad me, young lady. I just said you can see that boy when we get to church. This is not the way it's supposed to be. we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works and then Jesus said I will profess unto them I never knew you este ha sido una mañana muy espantosa de un catástrofe después del otro depart from me ye that work iniquity so robe and positions and titles and classifications and auxiliaries and departments and works and paying your tithe and paying your dues will not save you. We are still experiencing the aftershocks of the massive earthquake that have devastated this entire region. But if you want to be raptured, you must be born again. You must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. It's over! We've all been left behind. <laughs> it's going to be joyful for those who are raptured, but it's going to be sad for those who are left behind. Life! Life as we know it! You swore to me that you were going to get yourself together and start coming to church with me. Not today, okay? I'll go with you next Sunday. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.